Just um, so I don't have any slides here, so I'm not really prepared for this talk at all. Seriously, <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm Chian. I'm you know I, I do front end stuff. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess like uh, someone asked me to talk about electrons, so I so I say yes. So I'm, now I'm here and. Yeah, and electron, you know, I have to introduce electron, so, so this is the website. You guys can go to this website. So you notice that it's actually electron.atom.io. And then you might be wondering, it's like, oh, it's built by these guys, the atom, what, oh shit, what is this? <laughs> okay, atom.io. So it's actually the atom editor for some reason. So uh, I guess I need to ask, like, anyone here heard of electron? This thing? Okay. Anyone use Atom? Okay. Hmm. Okay. So there's like 50, 75 percent doesn't know. Okay. <laughs> so I guess. Uh, so depending on the time I have, I guess I can go back to history a bit. So in the beginning, well, from my perspective, there was this thing called Adobe Air. <coughs> So I remember, you know, a few years ago, I was like trying out Adobe Air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, anyway, Adobe Air 0 0.9.5 or something. It was before 1.0. It was like beta, and I was like, oh, so happy! It's like this is like the future of desktop web development. Yeah, and I was like building some apps. It was like a Tumblr app. Yeah. So uh, developing, developing, and then like they release 1.0 and they break all the changes. Like they, it's a breaking change. So everything break, and I'm like, ah oh, man, this is like what? And then a few years later, you know, they they are more focused on Flash. So you, when you build Adobe Air apps, there's like, oh, you can use HTML or Flash. So build desktop app with HTML, CSS, JS, or use Flash. So it's kind of like, kind of weird, but yeah, it's Adobe. So um. <laughs> yeah, so a bunch of Flash developers came in. They built, they just port their Flash app to desktop, and suddenly it works on desktop as an app. And then uh, I built a HTML app, and it was pretty good. You know, it's a, uh, you know, it was really damn good. You know? <laughs> yeah, the documentation is great. All their APIs is great. Everything is just works. They've covered everything, even like multi monitor setup. You know, like so good, man. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. You know, like, <laughs> and then after a while, I don't know what happened. So it like got bombarded by a lot of Flash developers. <laughs> so it's like there's a lot of Adobe Air apps that's only built with Flash. So it's like somehow they win, and then HTML start to lose. And then after a while, you know, like people complain that Adobe Air is very bulky, very slow. It uses a lot of memory. It uses a lot of CPU because of some reasons. And uh, yeah, it's th that's history. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so something happened within that timeline of you know their development, and now no one no one built Adobe apps anymore. So it's kind of sad. And then after that, I what did I do? Mm. After that, I try something else called uh, Accelerator Titanium. Is it loading? Yep. Uh, hmm, yeah. Is it loading? So, Adobe Air sort of go down, and then these guys go up. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was pretty cool. You know, like the developers were very developer focused. Yeah. Okay. Or the founders are very developer focused, so they built a lot of crazy stuff. You can like use JavaScript. You can use Python. Yeah, it's like. You can, it's like your HTML file, you can put JavaScript, right? You can put Python inside the HTML file and code in Python. Yeah, so it's kind of cool, but yeah, it's kind of weird at the same time. So it's like, oh, so awesome. And then uh, these guys, uh, they have actually have a lot of bugs. Compared to Adobe Air, they have way more bugs. So a lot of things doesn't work, like, oh, like you try to, like, Resize window or like I think at first they don't support animated gifs or something like yeah, so the animated gifs are not animated, so I'm like what, <laughs> what, <laughs> like yeah, yeah so you can't do that loading gif or whatever right in your app so it's like ah man and then I waited for months they don't fix it, 
yeah, and then they switch the focus to uh, to native mobile apps. So uh, they they are like more focused on mobile rather than desktop. So I'm like, uh, I'm sort of disappointed. So it's like anyway. <laughs> so I like uh, I built some apps with it as well. I, I was I was building like a Twitter app, Twitter client with Accelerator Titanium, and I gave a talk about it actually like a few years ago. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty difficult. Yeah. So as you can see, I'm pretty excited. You know, the talk is about ex being excited, right? <laughs> excited <laughs> about building desktop apps, but it always fail for me. <laughs> so uh, and then uh, after that, there's another thing called NWJS. Hmm, what happened to it? So we haven't go into Electron, right? So this is like an NW. Oh, okay. Dot IO again, yeah. So NWJS is like oh, like another way to write uh, desktop apps with Node.js. Uh, you can like NP like require like npm modules to do stuff. It's pretty cool. You know, it was previously called Node WebKit when it was using WebKit, and now they are using Blink, I think. Yeah, the Chrome uh, Blink engine. So uh, I've tried this as well, which is uh, pretty cool. Um, but I guess like my project at that time is pretty, quite difficult because I was using um, it was a video player app, and uh, so they have this thing like uh, if you need to play video, so, so it's kind of like weird, you know, like it's like a browser without the UI, without the toolbars, and then if you want to play video, you can't because the video has a dependency on the FFmpeg, so they include the browser, but they don't include the other stuff, so it's like you. Even though you have like HTML5 called the video tag, you put in video tag, no video for you <laughs> because there's no FFmpeg. So you have to put these uh, dependencies yourself. So it's, I was like, ah oh, man, why can't you just, just work out of the box, right? <laughs> so it's like, if, have, if there's a video, just play it. If there's an audio, just play it, man. You know? <laughs> but it doesn't. So it's not like everything packaged into one. So uh, it's cool. Um, Actually, even now, it's actually still cool. Uh, yeah, still cool. <laughs> well, there's also Electron. So for me, like, and when you want to, if you want to build an Electron or a desktop app, you can choose either Electron or NWJS. It's actually quite nice. Both also like quite the same way of writing, just very slight differences. Uh, most of this uh, desktop environment runtimes or whatever you call it, Adobe Air, Accelerator, Titanium, all these guys, they are very uh, window focused. Uh, like when you build desktop app, what, what's the first thing you think of? Like, oh, you need a window, right? Like an app, right? So it's like, okay, then you need like a HTML file. And then your HTML file needs to link to your JS file, like that, right? But Electron is more like, uh, when, when it gets started, it's more process focused. So when you start, it's actually start with a JS file, so not a HTML file. So it's like it run the process first, then you spawn the window from it. So it's more like multi-window focus. So you can like because your app can have have open have to open multiple windows sometimes. So uh, there's a lot of differences. Like if you open a new window, do you call the window the open? Like you know, it's a lot of these things. But uh, if you process focus, you, know, you handle it's more like easier to handle like multiple windows and stuff like that. If if you let's say your app has a lot of uh, Things you know flying around there, yeah. So Electron you know, here is pretty cool. If you use Atom, you realize that it's built with Electron. Uh, I think um, even like Microsoft, like Microsoft built this thing called Code Editor. It also uses Electron. And um, so that's it. Yeah, this is like uh, it's open source. You know, it's so if you are, I'm not I'm not going to like go through like how to build an Electron app <laughs> because. They have a very good uh, documentation about this. So npm install, npm install is quite easy. Uh, usually, like for me, you just go to uh, awesome electron. By this, <laughs> by this guy, uh, Cindersaurus. I think he came to Singapore like last time for the for for which conference? Force, Force Asia, right? Yeah. And then um, this is one thing that I want to show. This guy is pretty cool because it's Cindersaurus. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> anyway, <laughs> so this is a pretty good resource. Like, pretty, like you know, everything is there. Like, oh, open source, like Atom, New Clyde, Playback, Video Player, like you know, uh, Kitematic, like Docker Container Management. So it's a lot of apps. Like, and these are open source. You can just look at the code, and it's actually quite easy to write uh, Electron apps. I can uh, show you mine, which is like uh, it's also listed here. Where is it? <laughs> yeah, it's here. So, so I was like, um, I'm using Mac, right? So I need to. I was thinking like I want to show my iTunes song, like current playing iTunes song on the menu bar thing, like the Mac menu bar at the top. So I was like, ah, like should I use uh, NWJS or Electron? Let's try Electron. Okay, so. <laughs> So it looks like this. So I can just show you like the code if you can read the code. So it's it's actually pretty easy. It's like it's like writing a Node.js app if you like into Node.js. It's like oh require app, require menu, require tray. So uh, the documentation usually is very very easy actually. Uh, it's like writing a Node.js app. Yeah. It's like, oh, you require this thing, what does it do? And then it's, you just do all these things. And wait, so there's a lot of like, uh, let's say, file object. So it has all these uh, very specific things. So sometimes you might be wondering, why do you create a desktop app rather than a web app? Since you know it's built with web technologies, why do you have to make it into a desktop? So well, there's a lot of things that's like, um, sometimes you need to have, uh, like, let's say, like clipboard access, which is a bit difficult on the web, but anyway. <laughs> there's also uh, like shell access. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff actually. Uh, it's not there. Okay. Like usually it's like for me, it would be like, uh, let's say on the tray icon, something is on the OS level rather than a web, like, like a browser web page level. Uh, it's mostly like like menus and stuff. It's it's a lot of like these things. Like, you know, if you are interested in desktop apps, you just do a lot of this stuff. <laughs> anyway, so here's the code. Uh, it's it's quite easy to understand. You know, like browser window is actually a window, and I was I'm using this uh, playback thing. Uh, it's a node module that. So like somehow knows your iTunes current playing song for some reason. <laughs> so it's it's like magic. So I'm like, okay, I'll just use the the note module and then it, it works. You know, so it's like oh the API is just like uh, I just var iTunes it, and then uh, you know when the app is ready, you know build the template, uh, build like the menu. Uh, there's like an options window that I well it's a bit hard to for you guys to. Uh, imagine this. So it's like iTunes not on playing. So it's like it's an event. So when the playing event is there, then you do this. So I can show you how it is. Is it? Oh no! Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's my. Okay. NPM. Oh shit. Hmm. NPM. Stop. Is it start? So you see this thing, right? So it's called Kyoku. So it's just that thing. So there's no windows at all. Well, the only window is the preferences window, which is this. Uh, uh, it looks a bit ugly now because there's a bug in the Chrome, uh, in Chrome itself, actually. <laughs> so it's actually Chrome plus Node.js. You know, when you think of Electron, it's very, very weird. So you can set like a character limit if, in case your song name is too long. <laughs> and then you know you get truncated or something because Mac is weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's just weird stuff. So here if I let's say I play a song. Oh shit. Too many things. It doesn't display. Oh no. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> so if I play a song, uh, if I go to the next song. So it just you know, that's all. If I pause it, it just go back to that state. So it's very simple. Uh yeah. It's just that. <laughs> so if you see carefully here, there's one thing that's kind of cool. If you build a, 
uh, Electron app, there's this uh, special like NPM scripts. So this thing I learned from that guy, Cindersaurus. So if you read his code, he's like, oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> so it's like, oh, if your NPM start, you just like run Electron and then the current folder. If you package, you have to run Electron Packager, which has a dependency on Electron Packager. Uh, you just package your Electron app into an app, like the dot .app file. So it's like, oh, you have to throw in a lot of stuff, like, oh, like the current folder, you have to override the folder. <laughs> which platform you're building and uh, the, the what the versioning and then the icon so you just do all that stuff magically and then uh, somehow you just zip it yourself into a zip file and then you distribute your app yeah so it's yeah that is, it's kind of complete you know if you like, if, if you want to build uh, an app a desktop app and i think some people manage to put it on the mac app store or something so it works on uh, mac Windows and Linux. I haven't tried the Linux part. Windows sort of works. Yeah. Uh, there's also a lot of resources on how to build like installers. So if some people want to build like, oh, you double click on the file, install the app, right? There's also a lot of resources on that. Uh, yeah. Most of the time, it's kind of like easy to build all these things because Atom has already done it. So if Atom has an installer, then your app can have an installer. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you just refer to what the Atom guys do. Yeah. <laughs> so, a lot of resources here. Yeah, everything is here actually. There's also closed source one. Slack is actually built with Electron. Oh, okay. The email client, wow, okay. <laughs> There's boilerplates if you are by the same guy again, Sinosaurus. <laughs> if you are lazy to like start from scratch, you just follow the boilerplate. Uh, a lot, a lot of tools, which is really nice, like auto update by releasing on GitHub. Whoa, I don't know how that works, but it just works. Auto updater. So if you build a desktop app, you want to automatically update it. It's just uh, pretty easy. You know, like you can compile. Whoa, this is nice. Like ES 2015. Yeah, pre-compilation. And then I think there's one more called um, like this. Uh, which one is it? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Huh? Yeah. And then, just a shout out to to WeBuild. <laughs> <laughs> so even the WeBuild uh, menu bar app is built with Electron, but in a slightly different way. It actually uses like a like a boilerplate style. It uses uh, this. You can just go to the package of JSON. So it looks like this. So yeah, it's just a menu, almost the same style as my my app. But yeah. So it uses a, uh, a dependency on menu bar. So the menu bar, some people, they start to create components on top of components. So if you want to build a menu bar app, just use this. And then just, just use the API, and then you are done. So it's very simple if you just focus on menu bar. Yeah, so it's pretty easy. So this is we build SG. And then, uh, where's my app? Yeah. Where's, uh, mm, like, this is mine. So everything is open source. You can just read it. Uh, yeah, that's it. This is Electron. Any questions? Does it have a module to watch for file changes? File changes. Actually, there is one. Uh, it was recently added, like like yesterday or something. <laughs> yeah, it, because there's a lot of uh, pull requests from these guys, and I, I I saw I'm I'm watching this repo all the time, so I get emails. So it's like yeah, there's a lot of like new stuff all the time. Actually, there is one like file. Is it file changes, or is it like live? Uh, is it this? No. Wait. Yeah, it was recently added though. Somewhere there. Auto updater. Yeah. It's probably up there. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Why is it not? Yeah. So, any more questions? Yeah. Um, can you use any NPM module? Hmm. By right, it should be any NPM modules. 
but it always depends on that module like doing fancy stuff right <laughs> sometimes the MPA module might do like uh, platform specific stuff and then like for example the one I use is playback uh, which is like let's say npm play oh it's, it's a bit different though uh, because the way electron work is it starts a js file first so if when you say watch files right when you watch what do you do right you refresh the html page or refresh the js file like like how do you refresh the js file <laughs> so that's that's like the the, the question right so it's like if you build web pages, you can just like you know reload the page whenever you the file change. But for Electron, it's like oh, it's like note something file right, like something dot js. So you can't you can't really reload it. Like for example, my app, you can't reload it because they have to like sort of like do some stuff on the menu bar on the map menu bar for some reason. And then uh, there's a lot of like weird. It's more more like limitations on native side rather than the JS side. So and it's very platform specific, yeah. So it's like when you build uh, something for the Mac, oh, it works. But on Windows, it's again different. So it's more like that challenge itself. So if you build like let's say a browser window style, you, probably you can do the live reload, or live like fresh, you know, reload or whatever. Yeah. It still it depends on the app. <laughs> yeah. So, like for example, this one. Luckily, the, the uh, this guy he built it in the cross-platform way, so I, I can actually port this to Windows and Linux. Wait, actually, how did he do it? Uh, sorry. He uses ActiveX on Windows and he uses actually I'm not sure if it's ActiveX. Like Windows, Windows like scripts. Either ActiveX or. Oh shit, what is it? <laughs> yeah, like W script style. So at least like this these modules they, they try to make it like cross platform, which is well if that's your your thing, you know, cross platform. <laughs> yeah, for me I would like you know prefer cross platform stuff. That's like the selling point of you know node, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Any more questions? Or Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, why is this not going to follow in the footsteps of its illustrious forebears? Sorry? Uh, every other thing that you mentioned that preceded this basically died a swift death. How is the so wonderful that it's going to hang around? Uh, I, 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 actually, <laughs> yeah, actually, I have no idea. I guess as long as, it, as, long as Atom is alive, I guess it's alive. So it's <laughs> Yeah. I think yeah. good documentation is is one of them. They've also got good branding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it makes you think, oh, these guys know what yeah. they're doing. So, like, if you're building something over social media, you use it, back a logo on it. It's a good looking logo. Yeah. And quality of the logo is that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Quality of the logo. Famous open source project I know that doesn't have a logo is Mink. Okay. Mink doesn't have a logo. No. Actually, anything like anything with Linux, Linux, all those.